Hi, I'm Philip Merkel from Merkel's Music Factory and thanks for tuning into my video. Today I want to show you four essential tips on how to become a better sight reader. These tips are built on each other, so it's important that you understand the system. Just like reading any script, you have to be able to decode the individual characters. In our case, we are talking, of course, about music notation. The next step is the transfer to our instrument. Quite a few pianists make the mistake of switching their eyes back and forth between the notes and their hands. This takes a lot of time and unfortunately it doesn't really make you a good sight reader. So we must learn to master the keyboard blindly. Most mistakes in sight reading are caused by not being able to process the incoming information fast enough and though getting under stress. And everyone knows that playing under stress is not really fun and does not promote learning. A very simple trick is therefore practice without stress and with the zero error method. So let's get right started with tip number one. Every note on the keyboard has an individual name. There are many different systems to name the notes and tones. For our purpose, however, we use the traditional naming of octaves. So before you go any further, be sure you know the names and the keys, the octave position names and the basics of notation. If you aren't sure about this, here is a great internet site that explains the notation and how it translates to the key very clearly. I have provided the link in the description. So let's get into the first exercise recognizing and naming notes without thinking about them. Comparable to the spelling exercise of an elementary school pupil. The exercises are structured so that the notes on the lines and the notes between the lines are practiced separately and that's for both clefs. You should practice these exercises until you can perform them under 30 seconds. Let me show you first how it works. F, A, C, E, C, A, F, A. I've done these exercises with many young beginners and it usually takes them 8 to 16 weeks to perform an exercise under 30 seconds. So, Let's find out if you still need these preliminary exercises of recognizing and naming at all. Our goal? 24 seconds or 120 beats per minute. Just talk along with me and above all, stay in tempo. Good luck! F A C E C A F A C E C A F C E C A F E C A F E A C F A E C F E A C F E A F E A C F A E C A F E C Easy. The next exercise is about recognizing notes vertically. Here it is super essential that you get into the habit of reading notes from the bottom up. Most beginners make the mistakes of reading notes from top to bottom. Note: In the heat of the moment, the last man standing must be the left hand with a bass note. This must be practiced. The best way to practice vertical reading is uh, using the Bach chorales. It's very effective. Go to the website emslp.org and download the Bach chorales. It looks like this. It's all for free. And then you choose one Bach chorale and go from the bottom to top like this. Practice from low to up. So you say D, F, A, D. Then you go D, 
D-A-D-F, E. A-C-F, B-flat, D, F, G. C. There C, is another D, a great app, which is this one. It's called Bach Chorales. It's, it's an app. What you select any any number like this, and then you go in choral. Here we go. But now what you can do is, you say, okay, I want to have the whole thing transposed. Two steps up, and then we have it like this. This is amazing. This is the well-rounded pianist, and he has this one, side reading and harmony. So he takes four measures of a Bach chorale, reduces it to different levels. And this is an amazing side reading um, thing to, to work on. So I really recommend to, to work on this one. You can also increase the tempo of this exercise with a metronome, a drum loop, or even a song. There are no limits to your imagination. And the great thing about these two exercises, vertical and horizontal note recognition, is that you can practice them anywhere and especially without an instrument. You will notice yourself when you can name the notes fluently and without thinking. Then the time has come to consider that this preliminary exercises is done. At the same time, you should already practice on your instrument. For this, I have another effective exercise for you. It is very important that you keep the correct order. The order is recognize the notes, name the notes out loud, find the corresponding key, play the key, and then go on to the next note. C. B. Of course, you can also vary this exercise by using a metronome, a drum loop or even a recording. As mentioned in the beginning, in side reading your eyes should always be on the sheet music, so that you don't lose sight of written music, so to speak. Therefore, we have to learn to play the keyboard blindly. For this, I have some effective exercises for you ready. I don't want to come across too puristic and basically forbid looking at the keyboard. Sorry, no, no. For this, there is the so-called flash glance. The important thing here is that you never lose your orientation on the sheet music. After all these preliminary exercises with recognizing and naming and blind play, now comes, for me at least, the most effective method, so-called Zero error method. Nobody is perfect and mistakes happen. That is self evident. But the crucial question is how a mistake comes about. If stress is the original, for example, because of a lack of dexterity, a still too low reading competence, or because of just played mistakes, the zero error method can help. The pressure to prevent a finished musical result right off the bat is completely avoided. That's great. Calmly and comfortably a score is read and felt in three steps.
So those were my four essential tips on how to become a better sight reader. What I haven't covered yet is the topic of rhythm. Here I would like to refer to my great colleague Sahan Galt, who has published some really good videos on the subject of rhythm sight reading. And don't forget, sight reading is a matter of experience and routine. You just have to do it. There is no shortcut. With the presented exercises here, I want to save you time so that you don't have to make the same mistakes that I and many other pianists have made. But maybe you also have to take this detour. Who knows? But anyway, enjoy practicing. And if you like this video, please press the like button and subscribe to the channel to receive new content every week. Thank you.